Recently, a lot of discussion in the Western roller coaster community has revolved around seemingly modern and safe rides in China being closed due to meeting the end of their design service life. This seems counterintuitive as many Western rides have operated without incident for decades and even centuries in some cases. In particular, many seem to think that rides in China are on a set, strict 20 year lifespan and must be closed or experience a major refurbishment to continue operation. So is this actually true? In short, no, but the answer is more complex than that. Amusement rides are designed and maintained according to the standards in place at their location. There are a few major standards used to some extent by most of the world. Those are ASTM from the US, EN from Europe, and ISO from Eastern Europe and Central Asia. These organizations create standards for many different things, but each have specific standards for amusement rides. These standards are written by committees filled with experts on amusement rides. Over the last few years, there has been a significant effort to harmonize these standards. Currently, EN and ASTM are the closest to being harmonized. While some differences still exist, for the most part, if a ride is compliant with one of these standards, it will be compliant with the other. If you'd like to learn more about the content of these standards, I have made several videos covering them that are linked below. Most countries use or reference one or all of these standards in their laws governing amusement rides. Some countries choose to maintain their own standards though. These can be problematic as they're sometimes made without consulting those in the amusement industry and therefore can be incomplete or counterintuitive. Some examples of countries that use their own standards are Australia, China, and Japan. The Australian and Japanese standards have thankfully started to adopt many parts of the ASTM and EN standards. Meanwhile, the People's Republic of China has created its own GB standard. These include a suite of standards on amusement rides. These are divided into a few different standards much like ASTM and EN. Today we'll be just looking at standard GB18159-2019, which is specifications for roller coaster rides and GB34371-2017, risk assessment for amusement rides. Keep in mind that all the screenshots you will see of these standards have been translated from Chinese to English and therefore may have grammatical errors. Looking closer at 18159-2019, the standards for roller coasters, we can see that these standards cover everything from steel quality, restraint specifications, clearance envelopes, and more. In fact, the GB standard for clearance envelope and G-forces are actually nearly the same as EN and ASTMs. In other areas, we can see a few differences. For example, they list that for steel roller coasters, the distance between the side friction wheels and the track should not exceed 5 millimeters. This addition to the standard helps explain why we've seen Chinese ride manufacturers slowly move towards more modern track designs with tighter tolerances between the train, wheels, and the track. It features strict requirements for manufacturers and engineers, stating that detailed design documents, manufacturing process documentation, operation and maintenance manuals, and risk assessment reports must all be submitted before a new ride can be allowed to open. By comparison, most US states simply need a written acknowledgement from a ride's designer or manufacturer stating that a ride complies with ASTM F24 committee standards. Regarding those risk assessments, the GB standard states that rides must undergo a risk assessment when first being designed, when undergoing a major modification, and when being used after their service life has expired. ASTM and EN also require risk assessments when rides are being designed or majorly modified, but they don't reference a service life. All rides do have service lives given to them by their manufacturer. A ride's service life is essentially the length of time that a manufacturer says a ride is safe to operate without modification and that they will provide support for the ride. This varies from ride to ride, but it's usually between 15 and 25 years. In China, manufacturers, engineers, operators, and maintenance technicians can be held personally responsible for amusement ride problems that result in accidents. Accordingly, a ride's manufacturer will be hesitant to offer support for an extended amount of time, especially without major refurbishments or modifications being performed. Under these standards, when a ride reaches the end of its manufacturer provided service life, it must undergo the risk assessment process again. 
Looking at the standard GB34371-2017, we can get an understanding of what this involves. In many ways, the GB Risk Assessment Protocol for amusement rides is very similar to the standards provided by ASTM and EN. As a basic overview, a risk assessment involves looking at every possible situation that could occur and designing around any unsafe conditions that could occur within them. On a roller coaster, this will involve a deep design review of the following. The structure of the ride, electrical control system and individual electrical components, the operating conditions, objects placed near the ride, human factors, emergency evacuation procedures, and more. Completing a risk assessment is not something that can just be done by anyone. It must be completed by a qualified engineer. This could be the ride's original designer, or it could be a third party. In any case, the individual or company completing that assessment is taking responsibility for that ride as it continues operation. This is similar to the way that orphan rides work in Western countries. These are rides whose original manufacturer no longer exists or who no longer provide support for the ride. In these cases, other contractors take the place of the original manufacturer, providing parts and engineering support for the ride. Completing a GB-compliant risk assessment is quite a costly process. Accordingly, many parks choose to remove a ride once it reaches the end of its service life. However, if a risk assessment is performed, the ride can continue to operate in China without issues until it's time for the next assessment. Another factor to consider is grandfathered-in rides. A ride may have been compliant with the GB standard when it was installed, but it may no longer be compliant by the time it reaches the end of its service life. For example, the roller coaster Crazy Cobra, a Premier Rides launch coaster operating at Discoveryland in Jingo. The ride seems to be near the end of its service life. Looking at it, the ride is likely a Class 5 ride, similar to the ASTM requirement. This means that it needs to have a redundant monitored restraint. Unless Discoveryland has modified this ride in a way that I'm not aware of, the ride does not feature restraints like this. Its restraints lack a monitoring device such as a seat sensor, and adding these to the ride would likely be very expensive. Accordingly, with the need for a risk assessment coming up in 2026, the owners were faced with a choice. Pay for an expensive risk assessment and redesign or replace the ride's trains to be compliant with the standard, or remove the ride. In this case, it seems that they are choosing to close and remove the ride. In a similar case, Dive Coaster at Chimlong Paradise in Guangzhou. This ride is also nearing the end of its original service life. Instead of removing the ride, the park is choosing to perform the risk assessment and any required modifications. They'll also be relocating the ride due to unrelated development in the area. This is a rough outline of what standards for ride design and operation exist in China. This is by no means a complete explanation at all but it should give some insight into why so many Chinese rides seem to close after only about 20 years of operation. It's also important to remember that just like Western standards, these are developed by some of the most knowledgeable people in the field of ride safety on the planet. These standards are based on reality in the industry. That being said, they are always being adjusted, so it's possible that someday these requirements will be changed. In many ways, China takes amusement ride safety very seriously, and their standards reflect that. Though it would be best if they would simply just adopt ASTM or EN standards, this will likely not happen. Instead, we can continue as an industry to work towards standards harmonization. After hearing all of this, you may be wondering about those Henan province ride manufacturers that I've mentioned before, and be wondering how their rides ever pass an inspection. These manufacturers work by not considering their rides as amusement rides at all, claiming instead that they are other similar things like mall attractions or even plush toys. They also rely heavily on exports of their rides to areas with no standards in place. To learn more about these manufacturers, check out the description for a link to a video where I discuss this further. If you'd like to read the small section of the standards I referenced in this video, then check out the link in the video description. As a reminder, this is just a freely available segment of the two standards that I've discussed in this video that have been translated to English, not the entire standard. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.